Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting in Stewart, Florida. Today we're going to show you how to run new solar cables through your RV. And we've got two great examples here. One is a Class A behind me and one is a truck camper in front of me. So we're going to give you a comprehensive guide for any RV out there. We're going to link all the products that we use today in the description so you can find what you need to get the job done. The biggest question we get is where to run those wires. So I'm going to show you inside of this Class A where you can locate a good spot to run the wires. We're always looking for a floor to ceiling cabinet or a chaseway. Now in this RV, all of those for the most part were on the slides. So we really don't wanna be putting wires in a moving area on a slide. So we had a couple of small options. The best one being right here. So this chaseway runs from a cabinet on the bottom to a cabinet on the top, ultimately floor to ceiling is hidden from the eyes. So we've removed the speaker system from up top here. And you can see we've drilled a small hole down through the roof, a small hole down into the back of this cabinet. And we've covered the wire in our plastic loom. When we can't cover the wire in plastic loom inside of a cabinet, if, if it's absolutely necessary, there are no floor to ceiling chaseways that are accessible for you. This is our backup plan. It's the Home Depot cord mate. So just basically tack it to a wall. It's got adhesive on there and that's gonna hide your wires as best you can. So always make sure that the customer is okay with this. If you're gonna use this option, um, it's usually not our first choice, but it can speed things up a little bit sometimes. As you can see, this job's still in progress, but we'll add some labels on the entries and exits of the wire so that people know if they come across it, what it is, that it's, it's a solar wire and it's high voltage. If you're struggling to find a chaseway, you can always look where the manufacturer has installed all of their panels. So a lot of times that's right by the door. As you enter the camper, there's a chaseway where the manufacturer has installed the panels with the tank sensors and light switches. A lot of times jacks and slides are located here as well. So this is a gray area. Obviously, if the manufacturer had to run wires into here, you should be able to as well. Sometimes you have to take off a panel or two to, to get access to see behind the chaseway. But if you're able to drill down from the top to drop your wires in, that's a great spot. And bonus is a great spot to put your Victron touchscreen as well because it's right by where they're operating their camper from. If you're still having trouble locating a floor to ceiling cabinet or a chaseway, come up on your roof and look for a tank vent. So all your tank vents run in a straight line from the roof all the way down to the bottom, usually underneath of the RV where the tank is located. And these are all hidden. I mean, you don't see any of these inside your RV. So they are also running in a floor to ceiling cabinet or chaseway. And usually there's a little bit of space around that you can use for your solar wiring. So if you're able to locate this also from the inside, awesome. Maybe you want to drill up and create a small pilot hole. If not, you may want to remove the tank vent, just scrape off the ceiling and unscrew it. And that'll give you a little bit of visibility to see where there's some extra space for you to poke your hole and run your solar wiring through. So now we've talked about the location of where to run your wires from the ceiling to the floor. Now we're gonna talk about the hardware and the products that we use to make it possible. So the first question that we get pretty often is what wire to use. So we use Rich Solar's extension cables and we use these because it's a tin coated, fine stranded copper wire with two very thick, durable, UV rated layers of insulation. So when you're out on the roof specifically, it's very important to have two very thick layers of insulation. One, because the sun is gonna be beating down on the outer layer day after day for many years. Your solar panels have a 25 year warranty, so keep that in mind. Your cable needs to be able to last that long as well. Next thing, is that it's got a second layer of insulation that's gonna protect against things like chafing. If your wire is scraping up against the sides of something sharp or maybe a rodent is trying to chew at it. So really important for outdoor areas, use an actual PV wire. Once you make it to the interior of the RV, 
it's fine to use a standard marine rated wire. Um, don't really need that extra layer of insulation necessarily, but it never hurts. When you're outside trying to figure out what cable gland to use, this is what we use most commonly because it's got 10 feet of wire pre-attached to the cable gland. And it's got MC4 connectors already built in, so you don't have to crimp any on. So the reason we use this is because the most common troubleshooting call that we get overall is, without question, my solar's not working. And the overwhelming reason is usually just a loose connection, either on the roof or between the roof and the breaker. So to avoid that, the easiest way is to just use a single wire with no breaks straight through from the roof to wherever it's going, rather than the normal cable glands that have three inches of wire hanging off and you're crimping a butt crimp or something, you know, just inside your ceiling, that's just kind of asking for an issue down the road. If you can avoid that, it's best to avoid it. So this one continuous run of wire should hopefully, the 10 feet will get you where you need to go. If it doesn't get you where you need to go, at least it gets you to somewhere that you can access to extend the wire. So if a problem ever did occur, you'd know where to look. So if you're just fishing solar wires, this is great. If you're just fishing a Starlink cable, this is what we use most often. It's a C-View cable entry gland. And I like this because it's got rubber, so you don't necessarily have to use any sealant. And you can fit the Starlink cable through um, and you cut a hole in the rubber so you don't have to cut and recrimp your Starlink cable. So this is a great single cable entry gland for Starlink and this is a great one for solar, but if you're running both of those things together or maybe multiple strands of solar wiring, then what we use most is just an eight by eight by four junction box from Home Depot. And we're gonna use simple glands. These are really cheap and universal glands of all different sizes that you can order to fit your wires through. So this one gland contains holes for two solar wires that you can drill a hole for and secure to the junction box. This smaller one is typically a good fit for a Starlink cable. So you can drill as many of those as you need and have lots of room for wire in here. A big question that I get is, what sealant do you use then to you know, reseal the holes that you've made to run the wires? And we've got two answers there. Most commonly, we use Alphathane 5121 Self Leveler. Now this is a great sealant. It's what people use on diesel pushers. It's what Brinkley requires from the factory. It's gonna last a long time, multiple years for sure. Big fan of Alphathane. It's got a nice thick rubbery feel, but it's not a structural adhesive. This is just for waterproofing over top of what you've put in. If you do need something with some sturdiness, maybe you can't use screws um, or you, you don't want a self leveler, you want something thick to hold its position, the 505 UV from Cicaflex is gonna do a great job as well. Super sturdy, it's a marine construction adhesive. A mistake I see a lot of people make is to run their solar cable directly from the roof all the way to their solar controller with no breaks in between. It's important to give your customer a way to disconnect their solar array. And we always wanna use overcurrent protection really on any wire that we run. So this breaker accomplishes both. It's gonna allow you to switch your solar array off if somebody's doing maintenance on the inside of the RV and they don't want anything energized. When you're installing this breaker, make sure to put ferrules on this connection. I've seen a couple of times where a frayed wire of the positive and a frayed wire of the negative got very close to each other and actually caused an arc. So if you're installing one or two solar panels, not a very big deal. If you're installing 10 or a dozen solar panels, this could be the highest voltage and therefore the most dangerous connection in your entire RV. So just proceed with caution and make sure to install some ferrules and make a nice tight and secure connection here. If you need help configuring the series and parallel connections in your solar array, or you need help with anything else solar electrical related in your RV, don't hesitate to reach out to us.